Welcome back to our IB Chemistry video series. This is the third and final video in IB Chemistry Topic 4, Chemical Bonding and Structure, where we will be looking at polarity, intermolecular forces, and solubility. Before starting this video, it is vital that you watch our previous two IB Chemistry Topic 4 videos, as they establish fundamental understanding required for this video. As mentioned in our Topic 3 video series, electronegativity is the relative measure of the attraction of an atom for the shared pair of electrons in the covalent bond of which it is a part. As a result, when a covalent bond exists between two atoms with different electronegativities, the two nuclei attract the electrons with different strengths. This therefore means the electrons will lie slightly closer to one end of the bond than the other. This causes one end of the bond to be more negatively charged than the other, i.e. a dipole forms. The end result is what we call a polar bond. For your IB chemistry exam, you need to be comfortable labelling a polar bond. Let's look at an example of a non-polar and polar bond using Br2 and CCl4. Br2 joins two identical atoms, so their electronegativities are identical and the electrons would lie perfectly between the two atoms. Therefore, the bond is nonpolar. CCl4 joins carbon to chlorine. Using the data booklet, we can see that carbon has an electronegativity of 2.6 and chlorine 3.2. Therefore, the electrons would lie slightly closer to chlorine than carbon. Therefore, each bond is polar and chlorine would be slightly negative. To indicate this, the negative poles on the chlorines are shown with a delta negative symbol, and the positive pole on the carbon is shown with a delta positive symbol. It is worth noting that for CH4, the CH bonds are considered nonpolar, despite the fact that carbon has an electronegativity of 2.6 and hydrogen 2.2. This is because there must be an electronegativity difference of at least 0.5 for a bond to be considered polar. However, this point is minor. So, the concept of a polar bond is now clear. But how does this relate to a molecule? Well, we can describe molecules as polar or nonpolar too. However, this depends on the overall shape of the molecule. Just like a bond, a molecule must have a more positive or negative end to be considered polar. Let's use the example of CF4 and CH3F to explain this. The lowest structure for CF4 looks like this. So it has four electron domains and tetrahedral domain geometry. Since all four domains are bonding, the molecule is tetrahedral. As fluorine's electronegativity of 4 is greater than carbon's of 2.6, it has four polar bonds. However, the delta negative fluorines are symmetrically dispersed around the central carbon, so the molecule does not have a more positive or negative end. Thus, CF4, whilst containing four polar bonds, is nonpolar. The lowest structure for CH3F looks like this, so it too has four electron domains and tetrahedral domain geometry, and since all four domains are bonding, the molecule is also tetrahedral. However, only the fluorine's bond is considered polar, so it has one polar bond. Thus, there is a more negative end to the molecule, and so CH3F is considered polar. If you are struggling, a useful tip is that if the molecule has symmetrical geometrical arrangement of outer atoms, it must be nonpolar. Bond and molecular polarity may seem abstract, but you will get used to this process with practice. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.